All right, so today we're going to talk about nomenclature, which is a fancy way of saying naming compounds. Your book does a really good job with this, and it breaks it down into type 1, type 2, and type 3 compounds, and then also the stock system, which is the older way of naming it, and acids. So today what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on type 1 and type 2 naming compounds, which involves a metal and a nonmetal, or a metal and a polyatomic ion. So a couple of things that you're going to want handy are your polyatomic ion sheet, which you can download from Google Classroom. I put it under the supplementary materials. And also the periodic table out, and hopefully you watched that video and made your own, downloaded your own blank periodic table and filled these in because it has the different charges on here, which we're going to need to indicate for type 1 and type 2 compounds. And if you color coded it, it may look a little like this. And you'll probably also want either the periodic table from your book or a periodic table from somewhere else. That would be very, very useful. So quickly looking at the polyatomic ion sheet. You may notice that there is only one polyatomic ion that has a positive charge that we're going to have to worry about, and that is ammonium, NH4. NH3 is ammonia, NH4 looks like this, and that is ammonium. The rest of the polyatomic ions all have negative charges. So notice that there are two different ways that you can write acetate. You can write it as CH3COO with a minus or C2H3O2. A lot of times I like to write it this way. And the reason for that is because it indicates the chemical structure a little bit better. So we have a carbon, a carbon. On this carbon we have three hydrogens. On this one, we have a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen. So if you write it as C2H3O2, it really doesn't indicate that that's what your formula is. Now, we'll start out with type 1 compounds. And again, hopefully you've downloaded the note sheet on this. And I'm just following along with the note sheet that I have uploaded onto Google Classroom. Type 1 compounds are between a metal and a non-metal and the metal or a metal and a polyatomic ion. And the metal only makes one possible positive charge. Metals always lose electrons, non-metals are always going to gain electrons. So over here the alkali metals are all one positive, alkaline earth metals are all two positive. The only other elements that always form the same charge are aluminum, zinc, silver, and cadmium. Aluminum is under group 13. Here's an easy way, I think, to remember that aluminum is always 3 positive. The second half of 13 is a 3. Aluminum is 3 positive. Zinc is under group 12, 2 positive. Cadmium, also 2 positive. Silver, under group 11, the second number in 11, is a 1. Plus, they count down 3, 2, 1. So metals, their type 1 compounds are always alkali metal, alkaline earth metal, aluminum, zinc, silver, or cadmium. Now all you do is you name the first element, which is the cation. The cation is the positive charge. Then you name the anion, changing it to IDE if it's an element. If it's a polyatomic ion, you do not change the ending of the polyatomic ion. So, for instance, NaCl, I'm sure most of you already know that this would be called sodium chloride. Bam, sodium chloride. So you simply name the cation first, the anion second, change the ending then to IDE. If we had MgBr2. Well, that would be called Mg is magnesium, always forms a two positive charge. Br is bromine, so it becomes bromide. Now, if it is not a binary compound, which means that it contains more than two elements, look for a polyatomic ion. Again, the only polyatomic ion 
that is a positive charge you're gonna have to worry about is high the ammonium hydronium is technically what happens when you dissolve an acid into water so for instance if we had calcium and SO4 it's not a binary compound this is where those flow charts in your textbook really help out you can follow the flow charts to try to figure out if it's type 1 type 2 or type 3 and then you simply follow the naming scheme so here we have calcium calcium is always a two positive charge here we have sulfur and oxygen so what you want to do is you want to look at your polyatomic ion sheet and try to find SO4 SO4 2 minus charge. So if you want to put parentheses around the polyatomic ions, you can. If you only have one of them, there's typically not parentheses around it. Sulfate always makes a 2 minus charge because when you add together these superscripts up here, their charges, they always have to equal zero. So this one then would be calcium sulfate. And sulfate, there's a couple of different ways you can write it. You can write it as that, or you can write it as P-H-A-T-E. Both of them are correct. So calcium sulfate. So type 1, metal only makes one possible charge. The anion, the negative element, is either a non-metal or a polyatomic ion, and all the negative charges are always the same, so you don't have to figure out what the charge is. The only difference between type 1 and type 2 is in type 2, the metal can make more than one possible charge. So those transition metals and the inner transition metals down here are all going to be type 2 compounds. So you want to look to see type 1, metal, and a non-metal. Metal only makes one possible charge. So alkali metal, alkaline earth metal, aluminum, zinc, silver, cadmium. Now, this goes all the way over to the stair-step line because, of course, this, everything to the left of the stair-step line is going to be a metal. So, for instance, if we had MnO2, well, what we have to do is we got to try to figure out what the charge of the metal is by looking at the non-metal. Non-metals always make the same charge. Oxygen is right here. It's a calcogen and it has a two negative charge. Again, this is the reason that I went through and wrote these charges on top of the periodic table from the last video, is so that way you have that the halogens are always one minus, the calcogens are always two negative, nictogens are always three negative, and of course, polyatomic ions, the charge is indicated both up here as a superscript and over here on the side, because that's how I organized the table. So this one then, the oxygen always forms a 2 minus charge and the idea is is that these have to add up to be zero for their charge otherwise every time you touched any type of material you would get a shock from it because it's going to want to get to a lowest possible energy level and it's going to transfer the electrons so 2 times 2 negative is 4 negative so we have a grand total of 4 negative charges over here we have manganese, so therefore this must have a charge of 4 positive. So to indicate that this is manganese 4 oxide and not manganese 2 oxide, so we would write this then as manganese, not magnesium, common mistake, and then you use a Roman numeral to indicate the charge on the cation and then oxide manganese for oxide uh, let's try one more how about fe2o3 if you watch the thermite video then i used iron 3 oxide and powdered aluminum in order to have a reaction between them well, if we name this as a type 1 compound, there'd be no difference between iron, if we just call it iron oxide. Well, we have two different iron oxides. We have Fe2O3, we also have FeO, and they are different. So to figure out what this one's going to be, what we do is we put a 2 negative up here. 3 times 2 negative is 6 negative. We need 6 positives, so we put a 3 up here, so that gives me 6 positives. So this one would be called... 
iron 3 oxide, which most people think of as rust. Over here, oxygen is a 2 negative charge. Iron would also then be a 2 positive charge. And this one is iron 2 oxide. Okay, to benefit those of you that are actually watching the videos and watching them all the way through, here's an extra credit opportunity for you. You need to email me at brian underscore leonard at ibcc.edu and tell me that you want the extra credit from the naming video or you can call it the serendipitous chemistry. This is an article from a magazine published by the American Chemical Society called Chem Matters. It's only three pages long. They're written for high school age and college age students. Um, really simple to read. And then I have a 10 multiple choice question sheet to go along with it. So when you email me, at brian underscore leonard at ibcc.edu and ask for the serendipitous chemistry extra credit or the extra credit from this video i will email you a copy of this article and the 10 multiple choice questions you simply email me back the sheet with the answers to the 10 questions on it and you get one point extra credit for each one so you can get 10 extra credit points now please do not tell any other students in the class about this this is only for the benefit of those students that are actually bothering to watch all the videos that i'm making now if we have one with a polyatomic ion instead how about we have copper one phosphate so now we're going from the name to the formula so a really easy way to go from the name to the formula is you simply write the name of the cat ion and then put its charge on there so we have cu it's a one positive charge phosphate well, it ends in 8. That's a good idea then that we have a polyatomic ion. Looking at the polyatomic ions, we have phosphate is PO4 with a 3 minus charge. And I'm going to put it in parentheses. And the 3 negative charge goes with this entire phosphate. It's a charged molecule, just like ammonium. NH4 positive charged molecule. Now there's two different ways you can do this. I usually figure out well what's the least common factor that 1 and 3 both go into and figure it out that it's Cu3PO4. The other way you can do it really common is you crisscross the superscripts make them subscripts. So this, sup the, this superscript comes down here leaving the plus or the minus off. This one comes down here. And that's how you then can figure out what the formula of an ionic compound is, which is really in the last part of Chapter 4. And you can review that in the last part of Chapter 4 there as well. So let's try just another example or two. Uh, first of all, how about NaHCO3? So according to your flow chart, the first thing you want to do is see if you have a binary compound. Well, we have sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. We have four elements, so it's not a binary compound. Second thing, look for a polyatomic ion. Well, we know Na is a metal, so everything after that is going to be the polyatomic ion, HCO3. Then you look on your polyatomic ion sheet, and we find HCO3. Oh, HCO3, bicarbonate. So the name of this compound is sodium bicarbonate, commonly known as baking soda. Now what if we changed it a little bit? What if instead of having sodium bicarbonate, we have sodium carbonate and we want to figure out the formula for sodium carbonate. Well, we would write the sodium, Na, 
and then look on our polyatomic ion sheet and find carbonate. Well, carbonate, right there, CO3 with a 2 minus charge. Now, again, you don't have to put parentheses around every polyatomic ion. I'm going to just for this case. So sodium has a one positive charge. Carbonate has a two minus charge. If I crisscross these superscripts, make them subscripts, I get Na2CO3, which is then sodium carbonate. Now, sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate are two different compounds. This one is called washing soda. So whereas this one you add to your baked goods like uh, biscuits in order to make them rise up, here we have Arm & Hammer brand washing soda, detergent booster and household cleaner, which is actually moderately toxic. So you would not want to mix up sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, whereas this one is baking soda and this one is not, and all kinds of different uses on there. Now, normally, if we were in class, I would give you a neat story about the difference between sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and how you can save money. But since I'm trying to keep these videos all under 15 minutes, we'll skip it from there. The next video, then, I will show you how to do type 3 naming. So make sure that you download the worksheets on Google Classroom, on naming type 1 and 2 compounds and complete those.